All right, I want to come to you guys because I like helping you out. I love telling you what happens and what goes on so that you can learn from real life scenarios and situations. Because when you're a salesperson, you've got to be knowing what's going on, what's the prospect thinking, what's happening. And so I want to give you a real life example. I was just down helping one of the agents in our call center. And she's been following up with this guy, and she won't mind telling me, she's an awesome person. She's been following up this guy for a while. And he's been using the, hey, I don't have time, excuse and objection. And just been putting her off constantly. Well, so I went and listened to this call. I walked in on it. I didn't know it was going to happen. And the guy's name's Ken. She's talking to Ken. And they're discussing, you know, the fact that uh, they're small talking for 60 to 90 seconds. And then, she, you know, and then she's saying, hey, are you at your office yet? You know, is, is today a good day to do this? Well, Everything happens because of the way we say stuff and the way that we word sells questions. Because if you think about it, what's the one thing that, what, what, what's this guy's objection? What's his excuse for not moving forward? It's time. So by taking 60 to 90 to 120 seconds of small talk, what are we doing? We're robbing him of the one thing that won't get him to move forward, which is time. So number one, we need, to, we need to punch this dude in the mouth. We need to get his attention. We need to assume he wants to move forward. We need to ask a question, and we need to continue. Well, if you don't do that, if you rob him of his, of his main excuse, which is time, and then if you also jump into it and say, hey, and then ask questions that you know how the person is going to respond. Because when you ask a sales question and you say, you know, hey, are you at your office yet? Or is, and she knew he was at his office. Or is today a good day to go ahead and handle this? We, we know how the person's going to respond before we even ask the question. So don't ask a question that doesn't get you the response that you want. And so how should we word those questions? Number one, we shouldn't take 60 to 90 seconds of small talk and rob the gentleman of what he what is most precious to him and his main excuse, whether it's legit or not. It's the excuse that he's created to make himself believe he didn't have time to handle this. Everyone has 10 minutes. Everyone has 20 minutes if it's important enough to them. So rather than robbing him of 60, 90 seconds of small talk, dive in, get his attention. But then when you do get his attention, don't ask him questions that's gonna make him, you're creating the objection by, by, by asking questions certain ways. So what do I mean? Don't ask him, don't, don't say, hey, you're probably too busy for this, you know, you probably don't have time for this today. Don't say stuff like that. Say, you know what, hey, Ken, We've been working together for a while. Our office has a no callback policy. You're busy. And then what I like to ask is, hey, hypothetically, Ken, whether you do this, to, whether you take a few minutes today or whether you do it or whether you take a few minutes 14 days from now, you will be doing this at some point in the future. Am I right? And the way I'm talking and speeding stuff up, I'm creating urgency. And then say, okay, Ken, let's take time out of the equation. Let's do it today because whether you do it now or whether you do it later, you're going to do it. It's going to take a couple minutes. I'll be quick. Ken, what's your full legal name? I'm asking questions properly and I'm assuming I'm creating urgency. He, he's worried about time, so I'm gonna rush. He's not been asked correctly. He hasn't had someone assume what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna tell him what's gonna happen. I'm gonna assume he's gonna move forward and I'm going to assume that everything's gonna happen the way I want it to happen. I'm not gonna put stuff in the gentleman's head. Sales people don't realize a lot of times we are creating the objections that we get. One key thing that I want you to learn from this short video is we determine the outcome of everything we ever ask. If you ask correctly, fantastic. If you don't ask correctly, you won't get the response that you want and that you desperately need. Ask, assume, and ask questions properly and don't put anything in anybody's head. If you can take one thing away from this, the way we word sales questions determines the response that we give.